Okay, good evening. So we'll carry straight on with England's uh, post-match press conference with the Marat captain Owen Farrell and to his right, Steve Borthwick. If we could take the first question, hands raised, please. Yeah, on the right. Thank you. Steve, what does it mean to have finished third in the World Cup? Well, firstly, I'm, I'm delighted for the players to have got the, the win tonight. Um, to have worked so hard and to, well, to finish the World Cup with seven games and won six and, and the one we lost was to one point to the world champions and uh, the current world champions as we sit right now and, and current world number one, um, which I, I think shows the progress of the team, um, shows how the team has built through the tournament and, and also delighted they got the result tonight, delighted they found a way to win tonight. Given where you were in August, did you think this, this result was possible? Well, as we discussed throughout August and throughout the early part of September, August was building to be right for the start of September. I always believed that we were going to be right, and I think I said that a number of times. We're building towards September the 9th, and that's what we did, and that's what we were doing through August. And quite clearly, there was some challenging decisions were made through that preparation to ensure we were right for the tournament. Um, you know, we're very clear that the, the World Cup isn't played in August. So the, our preparation was built for the World Cup. Yep. Just next to him. Yep. Hi, Steve. Um, in terms of the messaging going into this game, um, how important was it for you to almost use this as dress rehearsal for other things that might come your way over the next um, couple of years? Uh, leading forward um, in an England shirt? Well, I think that, first I'll say that the focus was very much upon tonight. Um, the focus was upon getting the result we wanted tonight to, to finish the tournament in the way we wanted to. I think that playing finals games at World Cups is important. If you look at this team over the last two World Cups, played um, a quarter-final, semi-final and a final in 2019, winning two from three. And... And this World Cup's played a quarter-final, a semi-final, and then a bronze medal final, and won two from three. So you start looking at the last two World Cups, this group of players has played in six final games and, and won four of them. Now, what we want to do is we want to be in the final, we want to be winning the gold medal. These players, I want them to win gold medal. Um, that wasn't to be, but I think having finals experience, I think that's been an important element for this squad through this tournament, having that level of experience and I think it's going to be important for the team going forward. When you, um, when you review the tournament, will your overriding emotion be one of satisfaction, frustration or a mixture of both? Um, uh, firstly, I'll, I'll review the tournament in a very objective manner rather than an emotional manner um, because that's important that we understand what we need to do to address to be a better team going forward. I think that... I'll say is that I think that the players should be very proud of their efforts and very proud of everything they've, they've done and the challenges they have overcome. One thing that they've, they've, they've done, whilst things haven't been perfect, is they find a way to win games. Now, we didn't last week. We lost by a point last week, which we're, we're, we'll be disappointed with and it'll hurt for a long time. But the players have found themselves in tough circumstances find a way to win. Thanks, Steve. We'll go one, Tom, two, Nick on the right, and three here on the left. Thank you. Uh, Owen, I was just wondering if you could um, sum up sort of Ben Young's uh, England career, his last game today. Um, you played a lot, obviously, alongside him. What sort of impact has he made on you, and what sort of legacy does he leave behind? Yeah, well, anybody who's England uh, record, uh, men's record cap holder is, um, is obviously had a big impact on, on English rugby. Um, to be around for as long as as long as he have, and to stay uh, at the top playing international rugby for as for as long as Ben has, from being uh, a young a young player when he first broke onto the scene to to finishing now is um, there's a lot of work goes into that, and uh, a lot of a lot of people that you that you get to know, a lot of relationships that you that you that you have, and. Um, you you only you only do that when you you only get to do that if you work hard, and you get along with people and you and you and you have a good impact. And to do that for as long as Ben has is is a, is a testament to him. And, and Steve as well. Um, 
I think you were captain when he made his test debut uh, back in 2010. Uh, what uh, for you? What sort of um, experiences have you had of Ben, and also obviously with Leicester as well? Uh, what sort of legacy does he leave? Yeah. Um, I think that he's from being a young player with enormous talent to have developed with that, still with that enormous talent, developed as a leader, a guy who can manage in the, in the highest pressure, manage the, t the game in the, in the highest pressure circumstance. I think he's seen that development and then how he helps the other players around him, such a powerful force of the players. I think that's, um, that's an enormous credit to him. Uh, Steve, um, Theo Dan obviously had sort of two or three minutes where <laughs> one thing went wrong and one thing very went very right. Um, did, did the recovery, you know, the charge down for his try, just kind of show his tenacity and grit and, and, and just a you know word on his performance overall? Yeah, well, I, th I thought there was a, a lot of really, um, really impressive aspects of his performance tonight, and he's an impressive young man. If you look at that first throw. The hit is he hasn't. I haven't put him on the pitch the last couple of weeks, and he's going to his first throw. Maros asked him to his hit the back double tops, and he and he nails it. And um, that shows just because he was asked that in, in the Fiji game in, in Twickenham and didn't quite execute as perfectly as he wanted to. So it tells you what this guy is growing and developing. You see a man who. Yeah, something happened that wasn't quite the way we wanted to. And what does he do? But he gets straight back into the next battle, which is exactly what I asked the players to do. So I think you see a, a, a young man who's resilient, incredibly talented, incredibly athletic and powerful. And I think he's going to be in this England, uh, in this England squad for a very long time. Thanks. Uh, next one on the left-hand side. Hi, good evening. I was surprised by the by the hostility shown by the the French crowd toward the English team. Uh, there were continuous jeering and whistling during the match, and especially to, uh, uh, toward you, when you, every time you kicked a the ball, there were they were whistling. Even when you you prepared for for a penalty or a conversion, uh, were you surprised you? And do you understand why you didn't even play the French uh, at this tournament? Um. <coughs> No, not surprised. Um, <laughs> um, and that's it's usually like that here. When you play against, when you play against France and the Six Nations here, you don't, they don't they don't only cheer you when you when you when you're having a shot at goal. So it's 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 a bit different um, here in France than it is than it is over in England in terms of when a when a kicker's when a kicker's taking a shot. But it, that's all it is. It's just different. Um, it's, it's, that's no problem. Hi, Steve. Can, can you just take us through your what your review process looks like over the next couple of weeks? How long it takes to sort of digest all this, and then when do you start looking forward to the Six Nations? Um, I've already started looking forward to the Six Nations, um, and that that that's already started in my mind and my planning. Um, it's just in its very early stages. Uh, the the review is always an ongoing review I do after each week and each build, and I. I make notes as we go the whole time. Uh, I'll use the next two weeks to really compile that. And then I will meet with the coaching team in two weeks time. And uh, they'll all independently, we'll be doing the review, we'll bring all those things together. I'll then meet with the whole management team to then review. And then um, that'll be the process from which we work. Oh, and question for you, um, Tom, led you out onto the pitch for his 50th captain tonight. How much of a motivation was it for the team um, to produce a performance for Tom? Yeah, as, as we said during the week, um, this team wasn't lacking in motivation today. There was, there, was plenty, there was plenty out there. It was everywhere you look. And, and one, of them being, one of them being Tom's 50th cap. Um, he's, a, he's a tremendous player. He's, he's, he, uh, he, leads, he leads massively by example. In the way that he works, in the way that he puts himself, um, uh, when he when he puts his body on the line and, and works unbelievably hard for his team, uh, I've heard Steve said before his outputs, his output in games are, is 
phenomenal. And um, for him to be for him to be at fifty of uh, fifty caps already when he plays the game the way he does is 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 an outstanding achievement. And um, yeah, I can only see, I can only see him getting better. One more for me. Um, what what do you think you have to do as a squad in in the next World Cup cycle moving forward now to make more progress? than you did in the last one. I mean, COVID messed things up last time. I know it did a little bit, but have you got a sense of, of what you need to do in the next cycle? Maybe lessons learned from the previous one? From the previous cycle? Yeah, the, the one that's just finished. Um, that's a, it's a tough question to answer right now. That um, it, this, this team's going to be constantly evolving. This team's going to be constantly trying to get better at, at, at everything it does. And obviously, Steve's going to as he said, do a do a thorough review of of what we need to do, and um, and that's that's going to be ongoing. It's not going to be all planned out. No, I'm sure there'll be a, there'll be a plan, especially from the especially from the, s the staff. But the players deal the players deal with what's in front of them, and uh, right now the players the players are going to enjoy enjoy tonight and um, go back to the clubs at, next week. And um, the best thing the best thing that we can do for that next World Cup cycle is going to play well for our clubs at the minute, so um, I'm sure I'm sure the boys will do that. Okay, we only have time for two quick last questions. One at the front on the right, and the other one, uh, one in the middle. Thanks for your patience. Uh, hi, Steve. Um, down here. Um, you're obviously a relatively inexperienced coach, and certainly inexperienced in the England role. What have you learned about your own coaching during this tournament, and and what do you see from the squad that particularly encourages you? I think you had seven guys starting today who was 25 or under. Does that give you real optimism for, for the journey ahead? I think that the, the age profile of the squad, and naturally at the end of World Cups, there is always some players that uh, decide that then their, their time as a current England player in the, in the shirt now will, will come to an end. But I think the age profile of the squad is strong. So when you look at the, the, the semi-finals last week, um, seven more than any other seven players, 25 or under more than any other team in the semi-finals, and there's a number of exciting young players that that didn't make the 33-man squad, but were part of the preparations over the over the summer. So, as I as I look forward, I think there's um, there's excitement about those players. We know that the distribution positionally of those players isn't necessarily even. And I think we all know that there there are some. There are some areas where they're a bit thinner than others, and I need to make sure we're doing some work and to find that depth in those key positions. Um, that's going to be part of my project over this next period of time, along with the coaches. I think, in terms of the development of the coaching team and managing team, this this team only came together in June this year, the middle of June, and the coaching team just came together then. Management team came together then, and we had to to knit together a program super fast and I couldn't be more proud of what they have done to help support these players to allow these players to, to develop and, and I'll say again to enjoy and, and I really hope that the players have enjoyed this World Cup camp I know that we've the disappointment last weekend but I really hope that the players have, have enjoyed it because playing the England shirt should be the time of your life OK <clears throat> to Owen uh, here here <laughs> uh, for both teams, uh, the tournament start and finish with the same match. Which difference did you see to that night uh, and the match today? Um, <coughs> no, well, I, I, I think both games is, is two good teams um, playing tough test matches. Um, <laughs> the first, the first match actually seems quite a while ago now, as we sat as we sat here tonight. Um, but um, Argentina, Argentina have obviously built built throughout the tournament, as 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 we feel as we feel we have. And all I can all I can speak about now is how tightly contested that game was today, and, and what a tough test match it was. Thanks, Owen. Steve, would you Thank like you. to make some closing remarks? Yeah. Um, I'd like just finally to say to everybody, and in particular the English media in the room, thank you for all your hard work. I know that this tournament has been, a, with the preparation camps, the test matches through August, it's been 
um, it has a considerable amount of time and, and for yourselves it's a lot of time away from home away from your families as it as it is us um, and a lot of travel so I want to say thank you to you for all that now I know sometimes we might not agree wholeheartedly with things but um, I think what we are absolutely aligned upon is that we want English rugby to succeed we want English rugby to thrive and it's going through has gone through some challenging times and we aim to make it grow. I think we are fully aligned in terms of wanting in that aspiration. And I thank you on behalf of myself, Owen and everybody in England, in England rugby. Thank you for all your hard work. And thank you very much. Thank you very much.